All right, we'll continue on with the knee, shown here. Let me give you a page number. Atlas knee. Bones of the knee, ligaments of the knee, we covered next. And knee kind of starts on page 428. There's a lot of good figures all the way up to and through 437. So 428, 437. Knee. And it kind of starts with this, this kind of view of the knee from the posterior side. If you look at the anterior side, the knee looks like this, just looking at the bones. Okay. So let's go through the articulations of the knee. Include well the main ones. What I stated before, the medial condyle of the femur articulating with the medial condyle of the tibia, the lateral condyle of the femur articulating with lateral condyle of the tibia. So those condyles are the main articulations of the knee. Medial lateral. Condyles a femur. <clears throat> Articulate with. Medial lateral condyles of tibia. You also have patella and patellar surface. That's an articulation. The patella, which is the bone. You could just say it articulates with the femur, but you know it has, it has the name of patellar surface. That's an articulation. And you also have that proximal part where the, the head of the, the fibula articulates with the tibia on the lateral side. That's part of the knee, too. You know, right there. Head of fibula articulating with tibia. <clears throat> head of fibula. with tibia proximally. Because if you go down to the ankle, there's an articulation there too. But this one is called, well technically it's part of the knee, and you call it the proximal tibiofibular joint. Tibio fibular joint. It's in the knee region. So just know those as the bony articulations. Then we kind of have to know the structures of the knee. Um, we'll kind of build it from inside to outside. <clears throat> There's these little fibrocartilaginous pads called the menisci. So if I add the first layer of connective tissue, they usually show up. There they are. So I'll highlight one of them. That's medial. That's the medial meniscus. And then the one out here, lateral meniscus of the knee joint. So note the menisci. So knee structures. lateral men, <clears throat> this guy okay that's the pluralized form of the word
you know, I think I'm missing it in there. Lemis, lemisky, lemis, lemisky, meniscus, singular, plural. Okay. They're just described as fibrocartilaginous pads. They help absorb the shock that occurs when you, you, know, you land on your uh, feet. Little shock absorbers. Fibro cartilaginous pads. They function as little shock absorbers. Inside the knee. When I say inside the knee, I mean you're inside the joint capsule that surrounds the knee joint. There are other, uh, there are ligaments inside the knee that I want you to know. There's one right there. That's called the ACLS, one you're asking me about. The anterior cruciate ligament, it's right there. There are two cruciate ligaments. They're called cruciates because they kind of make a cross on the inside of the knee. This is the anterior one. It's highlighted in green. It's hard to see because it's inside there and it's between the bones. ligaments anterior cruciate ligament you can abbreviate an ACL and just refer to it as that usually I don't allow abbreviations but I mean I might that might not that one pass it's kind of referred to as the ACL more than its full name side, we have tibia, we have femur, and the ACL uh, is basically running from here, anteriorly, posteriorly to here, pretty much. I mean, on this picture, you can kind of see the front of it. It's going posterior. <clears throat> what it does is it prevents, let's well, orient yourself, this is anterior, this is posterior. So, I mean, if you kind of push the knee or pull the knee this way, this becomes taut. So it prevents anterior displacement of the knee. Or I should say anterior displacement of the leg. That's a very light play. ACL prevents. Anterior <coughs> displacement of the leg. I'll show it to you uh, next time, but there's a test you can do to, to see if you think you ruptured it. It's called the anterior drawer test. So let's look that up. Anterior. That test, if you look it up, it's a test of the ACL, and you can see how the trainer kind of tests for it. They just literally take the athlete, they're on their back, the knees bent, and they just kind of pull the leg and see if it comes forward too much. That, that might mean this ligament is torn. Um, that ligament is torn a lot by, by athletes and just regular people. There's a PCL too. Now the PCL, let me get it in the screen here. It kind of starts in the back and goes to the front. 
posterior cruciate ligament. or that one. They're both part of the PCL. I'll highlight the bigger one. So that's what it looks like from the posterior view. So that one, what it's doing is, it's kind of starting from back here and going to the front. It's the threaded out posterior cruciate ligament. And it prevents well, you know, the opposite. It prevents posterior displacement of the leg. I don't hear about this one rupturing as much, although it can. Um, prevents posterior <coughs> displacement of the leg. So they make a cross on the inside of the knee. Cruciate means cross. Okay. So this is inside the joint capsule. We got the menisci, ACL, PCL, and um, I want to build up the knee here. Um, put the synovial membrane on it, and let's put other ligaments on it. There are a couple of extra capsular ligaments I want you to know. Take away a layer. <clears throat> so lateral view of the knee, that ligament right there, going from the fibula <clears throat> to the femur, is the fibular collateral ligament. Fibular collateral ligament. So this is external to the uh, knee capsule, so it's extra capsular. That's what they call it. So you have two collateral ligaments, this is one of them. The fibular collateral ligament. In clinical circles, um, they, they still call it the lateral collateral ligament because it's on the lateral aspect of the knee. Remember, the fibula is your lateral splint bone. <clears throat> So this is commonly referred to as the LCL. So what this ligament does is it prevents the knee from buckling out. If you receive a blow from the inside, this kind of will become taut. Hopefully you don't blow it out, but this keeps the knee from buckling out. Prevents the knee Collateral. There's a medial collateral ligament. It tends to have an association with the medial meniscus. Let me add, add a layer to get it in there. It is um, this one. Tibial collateral ligament on the inside of the knee. Tibial collateral. called the MCL or medial collateral ligament or MCL okay, for short. So it prevents the knee from buckling in. Okay.
So that's this one. Now, um, if you receive a blow and your knee completely buckles in, you would receive a blow from the outside. Maybe if you're a football player, you're running, but you plant your foot, and your foot's stuck in the ground with the cleats, right? In football, they're, they're kind of like shaming you for headshots, right? Mm -hmm. Using your helmet to target the head. Mm -hmm. And so athletes are probably going to go, well, I guess I got to go for the knee. You know, I can't go here. You're just going to have more uh, lower extremity uh, injuries. If, if you receive a blow from the lateral aspect and this ruptures, in serious cases, it will completely rupture. In mild cases, the knee will buckle in, but the ligament will just sprain. And there's different grades, grade three, two, one, and one, three is the worst, okay? Uh, sometimes if it ruptures, it tears the medial meniscus with it. And usually the ACL will rupture with the MCL. Those three all together is called the terrible triad. Completely blow out your knee. Maybe it causes receive a lateral blow to knee. Maybe rupture or tear. Three things. One, MCL, ACL, medial meniscus. Write that down, I'll be right back. I gotta change the battery here. All right, so that's the knee. I gave you two cruciates, two menisci. I gave you two extra capsule ligaments. Um, there's two more ligaments associated with the patella. So let me kind of build more. Let me add some muscles to the picture here. Okay. Notice that the patella is inside this ligament. Let me, let me strip it down. Now you see the patella, right? It's right there. It goes away when I add the quadriceps tendon over it. So what I've highlighted in yellow is called the quadriceps tendon. This is where the quadriceps muscle group inserts onto. It's a dense regular connective tissue called the quadriceps tendon, part of the knee. So we're still on knee. quadriceps tendon. So the quadriceps muscle group inserts onto patella. That's the tendon. Is your kneecap, 
but you can't really insert. The patella is just there for leverage. You don't really move the knee with the patella. You have to insert onto the tibia. So from the patella, that connective tissue extends down to the tibia. And what I have highlighted there is the patellar ligament. Even though it's highlighted separately, you can see they're one structure. We just call them two things. The same connective tissue that goes from patella to the tibial tuberosity is the patellar ligament, part of the knee. It's the same tissue, but one's a tendon, one's a ligament. Because to be technical, a tendon is where muscle inserts onto a bone. A ligament is where bone to bone goes, right? So that connective tissue goes from patella to tibial tuberosity. And the tibial tuberosity is where the quadriceps truly inserts onto to extend the knee. Quadriceps inserts here, tibial tuberosity, for knee extension. So let me show you knee extension, and let's talk about movements of the knee. <clears throat> so it's pretty much done talking about structures of the knee. Uh, let's go rectus femoris motion, knee extension. So when the knee is bent, that's knee flexion. That's knee extension when you straighten out, as in standing. Right now you're sitting. If you were to stand up, you extend the knee. So you can see how the quadriceps muscle group is using the patella inside that ligament for leverage. It's easier to make the knee extend when you have that little bone there. You can pull around it. See the patella in there as the knee is moving? So it kind of uses that bone for <coughs> Leverage. If that bone is not there, and all this connective tissue is against the femur, there's more friction, and it's going to cause a lot of problems. You need that bone there, okay, for this movement. So when the knee straightens out, that's flexion extension. That's basically all the knee can do. The knee is a hinge. And somehow students mess this up because it's kind of opposite for the elbow, right? Like flexion, extension for the elbow, students tend not to mess that up. But knee flex, the knees, it's like your elbows and knees are backwards. So flexion is when the knee is bent, but the leg goes posterior. When the leg straightens out, <clears throat> that's extension. So don't confuse knee and elbow. Okay, let's talk about just the tibia now. I'm going to isolate it. I don't have too many. Um, well, let me put it back in the skeleton. Of your two leg bones, what we say is, I think I might have said it already, the tibia is your weight-bearing bone. Okay? You can see how it articulates in the skeleton. That, that should make sense. Tibia. Weight-bearing bone of the leg. Remember, in anatomy, the leg is the region between the knee and the ankle. And um, I heard in the lecture that uh, 
if you remove the tibia, the fibula, this little stick, can actually thicken and support the weight of the body. Although I haven't heard a case of that. I remember hearing that as a, as a student. This is when it's there and normal and it still bears the weight. The structures um, on your study list that I have, four, tibia, not too many, got the condyles there. Let me orient you. Let me give you the clue. This is the clue so you can tell uh, right from left. See that little point down there? I'll get to it at the end. That's the medial malleolus. If you know that's the medial malleolus, you won't get confused up here. So you have um, medial and lateral condyle. What's in purple? The lateral condyle, because it's on the side opposite of the medial malleolus. That's the clue I always use. Okay. So you have medial lateral <coughs> condyles. I've written that a lot. <laughs> okay, well, anyways. They're the main articulations of the knee, said that. But now there's a little thing sticking up between the uh, condyles. Let me kind of go here, let me go to the surfaces. Now they don't call it what I call it on my study list, but I'll kind of highlight, you know, use a pen. Let me put the, the leg bone back in the knee. Let me go to the posterior aspect and kind of show you what I want to show you. When the knee, when you got the femur articulated with the tibia, and you see on the tibia there's a little part that sticks up, one and a half circle, that's called uh, the intercondylar eminence of the tibia. It kind of fits inside the intercondylar uh, notch of the femur when the knee's extended like that. So in a conjular eminence, well, like the name implies, it's between the condyles. It fits in the interconjular uh, notch. And don't forget what bone these are of. The interconjular eminence, that's of tibia. That's what I'm talking about. Fits in the um, in the knee that notch, the intercondylar notch. That's femur bone. Okay. So this is a posterior view. I'm going to leave this view. We're going to look at the front of the tibia and note the tibial tuberosity. Front of the knee, that big orange spot now purple. Tibial tuberosity. I said earlier it's where quadriceps inserts. You know, when you kneel, saying your prayers, you kneel, and that is what you kneel on, basically. Tibial tuberosity. What you <clears throat> kneel on. There's all these margins and borders. I just want you to know the anterior margin or border. There's a little line there. There's a sharp edge of the tibia. You can't really tell in the app, but it's in purple now. And it's on the anterior margin. That purple line, if you can make it out there on the app. So it's like, okay, what's in purple now is a lateral surface. And what's in purple now is a medial surface. So the edge between those two surfaces is a sharp edge called the anterior margin. There it is. There's tibia. No anterior margin, or sometimes it's called the anterior border. Either, either way. Interior margin or border. I've seen both. <clears throat> well, this is your shin. 
you know, when people say you're, you ban your shin, uh, your shin bone is literally the anterior margin of the tibia. There's, there's no muscle over it. It's skin deep. That's why it hurts so bad when you bang it into the desk. Uh, let me throw on all the muscles. Muscle, 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 muscle. I got all the muscles on there. Do you still see the green tibia? I mean, there, that part is not covered by muscle, skin deep. That's why you wear a shin guard and soccer and you want to protect that. All right, so you also have I already mentioned it, meobaliolus. It's in purple now. <clears throat> to me, that's your number one clue to help orient you. Front from back, medial from lateral. I would say for the front, just look for the tibial tuberosity. If you know that's the front, and you know medial malleolus is medial, then you can tell front from back, you can tell left from right. So is this left or right tibia? If that's medial, that's going to be um, the right. And remember, when you're working in the lab and it's not a test, you can walk over to the skeleton to check yourself, make it match. You can't do that on the lab practical. You're not allowed to leave that station as you rotate through. Okay, medial malleolus. You can palpate it. It's your inside out ankle bump. from tibia to fibula, unless there's any questions on tibia, get rid of the muscles. So your lateral splint bone is the fibula. Now when you look at it by itself, it's not much to look at. It's just a little splint. Uh, I think in terms of surface features, well, I think the challenge is can you tell left from right? Okay, so you kind of have to, I can't really give you the dead clue so you can tell. You just kind of have to work with it in lab. I can tell you how to identify the top from the bottom. The head is proximal, lateral malleolus is distal. I'm going to zoom in proximally, see if you're listening to me. What's in purple? Head. That's the head. Okay, that's the fibular head. It's proximal. Fibula. The lateral splint bone supports the leg. Okay. That's the head, fibular head. No, that's where the biceps femoris inserts. There's those two big tendons, you can, you can feel them on, on your knee. The one on the outside, laterally, is that tendon inserting on that head. Okay? You go to the other end of the bone, it's the lateral malleolus. The, the, the head is more knobby, if you will. The lateral malleolus is your outside ankle bump. It's a little flat, more flat. That is the articular surface of the lateral malleolus. The whole thing is the lateral malleolus, the whole bottom end. It's your outside ankle bump. So medial and lateral malleolus help make the ankle. You put it back in the foot, knee ankle thing. Um, Zoom in there. 
So you can see how the lateral malleolus, the distal end of the fibula is the outside ankle bone that you can feel as well. I remember one year on a practical, I totally confused students. I don't know why this would confuse you, but it did. So let me give you a fair shot. I, I put a piece of tape right there where it's purple. And I said, identify a surface feature. What would you put? Lateral. It's the lateral malleolus. Now, because I put it on the medial aspect of the bone, they were confused. The whole thing's the lateral malleolus. I happen to put the tape on this side, and that's medial. The student's like, wait, that's the lateral malleolus. Why does he put it on the medial? The whole thing's the lateral malleolus. Where's the medial malleolus? It's on another bone. So it doesn't matter where I put the tape, as long as it's down here. Um, I thought that was funny. Because it confused more than one student. So I guess there was a group of students who convinced each other it's only the lateral part of the lateral malleolus. It's the lateral malleolus. Oh, that's not true. It's the whole, the whole end of that bone, basically. OK, well, anyways, let's talk about the ankle. We got foot, distal leg. That's ankle. OK? Now, how does the ankle move? Basically, it's a hinge joint. That's the main movement. Like the knee is a hinge joint. A hinge can move in one plane. When we say hinge, like a door is on hinges. It swings one way. So um, let me show you the main movement of the ankle. So the main movement of the ankle, that's called dorsiflexion when you pull your toes up. When you stand on your tippy toes, that's called plantar flexion. So know those two movements. Dorsiflexion, as shown there, pull toes up. The ankle moves up, dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. as like when standing on your toes. Plantar flexion. Well, let me show you plantar flexion. It's not really showing it there. The gastroc is the main muscle that does that. The soleus, it does it too. Let's see here. There you go. Pull, pull the toes down or stand on your tippy toes. That's plantar flexion. Um, okay. Let's go through one more movement. It's called inversion, eversion of the foot. Also involves ankle. Let me go to the tibialis anterior. So the foot's moving in, inversion. Call that inversion of the foot. So then you have eversion of the foot, whereas the outside lateral aspect of the foot moves up. You highlight a muscle that does that. That's E version of the foot. It's a very subtle movement.
Now, there are different jo joints here. Um, let me go back to inversion. It shows it a little better. Here's inversion again. I want to zoom in on it. So I want to point out the joint that's actually moving. Now this bone here, I'll get to, it's called the talus bone. That's the talus of the ankle. See how that joint right there, that's part of the part that's moving? That's called the subtalar joint. So that's literally what's moving for inversion, eversion. It's moving up. Subtalar joint. For the plantar flexion, dorsiflexion, it's more, um, well, let me just do it again. One more time. Let's see here. Dorsiflexion. Give you a, a any, any view is pretty good. You can see the whole thing moving. Uh, there's something called the trochlea of the talus. The name of, when people say ankle, and this is the main movement of the ankle, it's literally called the talocrural joint. Moving up, talocrural joint. Tallow refers to the talus, one of your ankle bones. Cruel is the anatomy word for leg. I don't know if you remember all that stuff. Tallow, cruel. So tallow, talus, it's the bone of, a bone of the ankle. Cruel in anatomy means leg. So really that's the ankle, tallow cruel joint but subtalar is considered part of the ankle too. Now I want you to know those two joints because that, that, that is what is moving when you move the ankle. Ankle, okay. I'm gonna take off muscles here. You see how the leg articulates with the foot? Zoom in on it. You have medial and lateral malleolus. They kind of provide support around the trochlea of the talus bone. Something like that. Basically what you got there. Now there's a lot of ligaments too. I won't give you any ligaments to know for the ankle. You can uh, look them up if you're just dying to know. We have a lot of ligaments down there, too. I gave you knee and hip ligaments, though, which should be enough. <coughs> Ankle. Okay, well, you have medial, lateral, malleolus, support. The trochlea of talus. There's that word again. Trochlea it means pulley in anatomy. It's on your first test. Some of you missed it. And you thought you were done with it. You're not done with it. Trochlea is on the talus as well. Let me isolate trochlea of talus. Isolate. I'm just showing you the talus bone. That's the trochlea in green. Okay, for that back and forth movement and dorsiflexion, plantar flexion. So that's basically the ankle. Let's talk about the seven tarsal bones. Highlight it in green there. Okay, let me highlight the first one. That's the tarsal bone. I'm sorry, yeah, tarsal bone, that's the talus. Seven tarsal bones analogous to the, the carpals of the wrist, that first one highlighted is the talus. 
have one of them in each foot. And I just said to know the trochlea of talus as a surface feature on it that articulates with distal tip fib. Shorthand for tibia fibula. Um, that's that big bone right there. Now posterior to it, inferior to it, is the calcaneus, your heel bone, right there. Let me show you the whole foot. Lateral view of the foot, what's in green. Um, it's kind of like the pistol grip of a gun a little bit. It's the calcaneus. Calcaneus. Probably known as your heel bone, and um, the Achilles, the calcaneal tendon, also known as Achilles tendon, the big calf muscle inserts there. Calcaneal or Achilles tendon of tricep sura inserts here. Tricep sura is just, well, you know how many heads it has. It, it's your calf muscle. Gastroc soleus complex. Oh, well, let me show it to you real quick. Let me show you the tendon, I should say. Okay, there's a tendon. Show you the whole back of the leg. I call it tricep sura. It's more commonly known as the gastrocnemius. We'll get to it. Anyways, that muscle, gastroc means belly shape. It has two heads that are belly shaped. That's two of the heads. The third head's back there. Anyways, that tendon of tricep sura goes all the way to that heel. You've ever heard of a ruptured Achilles? Mm -hmm. That thing pops. Now, I'm sure you hear that one when that one ruptures. That's going to incapacitate you for a while, I'm sure. You'll be hobbled and I'm sure you need medical attention, maybe surgery. Okay, that's the calcaneus, calcaneal tendon. I'm going to get back to the rest of the tarsal bones. There are seven, I did two so far. So, right in front of the talus, that's the, the navicular, navicular. Parcel bone. It's boat shaped, like the Navy has ships. And I just remember it's on the same side as your big toe. And in the Navy, they have big ships. So that's how I remember navicular on, on the medial aspect. Okay, on this side, <clears throat> the cuboid Let me highlight it. That's the cuboid tarsal bone there. I'll just put cuboid. So that's one, two, three, four. The last three are cuneiforms. There's a medial, intermediate, and a lateral. So the one on the same side as the big toe is the medial cuneiform in the middle there, intermediate cuneiform, and the third one, lateral cuneiform, those are the last three. So, medial, intermediate, lateral cuneiform bone. So those make the seven tarsal bones. This is pretty much um, ankle posterior foot. The midfoot are the tarsal bones. That's the first one, the first metatarsal, there are five. The first one is on the same side as the big toe, the hallux. Right. So foot and hands are different. In the feet, the big toe, digit one, is medial. But in the anatomical position, you're supinated. So digit one is lateral. 
in the hand. So that's medial. That's the first metatarsal. So no metatarsals. One through five. Okay? And then bones of the foot. I'll do second digit. For example, I mean, it's the same as naming them for the hand as you do for the toes. So if I'm naming this on a lab practical, this is the proximal phalanx of digit two. You have proximal, middle, distal phalanges for digits two, three, four, five, just like in the hand. Note that again. Phalanges. <coughs> So digits two through five, your toes, have proximal, middle, distal phalanges. Digit one is the hallux. that word. Hallux big toe, basically. Has proximal distal phalanges. Okay, I think I'll stop here. Um, I thought about starting muscles, but I think I'll just do all the muscles on Wednesday. That's going to be a long lecture, longer than today. But um, I don't know, I'll just keep it neat. Bones today, muscles on Wednesday. And I will do some neuropathies too. And I think I put a slide of the different neuropathies I want you to know. Um, remember how like I did the radial nerve palsy and all that? Or like the, the winging of the scap? I'll do kind of similar things for the lower extremity. I'll do that on Wednesday too. Take the rest of the time to uh, study the bones. Okay, go, go find them. I'm just going to leave them in the cabinet so you know where to go if you come to open lab. And um, if you want your lab practical, uh, I got them. Uh, you can come look at them. <laughs>